Hello guys, it's Chris from daxtrader.co.uk. It's Wednesday, 13th of September 2017. I'm going to take a look at the DAX um, this morning. So before we get started, just the, the standard trading disclaimer. Trading financial markets is risky. It involves the risk of losing your invested money. We're not providing financial advice here. Uh, so uh, if you do decide to enter into a trade off the back of any information from this video or the website, please do so entirely at your own risk. It's meant for ed education purposes only. All right, so the video itself is based on the charts that I use, share and broadcast on the website to the premium members. If you're interested in joining it or you want to get involved uh, with any of that, then you can find out more information by registering up here on the website, daxtrader.co.uk. You can register for free to access the articles, which you probably have done so already. Uh, but uh, if you're reviewing this on YouTube, check the description uh, for the links and go and get yourself a free account set up there. Premium membership entitles you to uh, the live room, the journal, uh, the chat room and the signals as well. And we also do Forex and other bits if you want to upgrade to gold. All right, so let's get started then. So. And the economic calendar for today, we have got, uh, probably going to need to just change what we see. So it's got a high impact stuff, I think. So it's really tomorrow is the main thing for the pound, a couple of Aussie and dollar bits, as well as the Swissy. But it's the Bank of England vote tomorrow, the Monetary Policy Committee. So uh, stick around for that. Be careful of any pound holdings or FTSE holdings that you've got. Um, rolling into that and we've got a bit of release later on today as well okay so let's just jump straight into the charts then so we're going to start with the TPO for the DAX the TPO is the is, is pretty much showing the market profiles for each individual day for the last couple of months three four months or so and these horizontal blue lines are showing the points of control which is the most frequently traded tick area uh, for price action uh, during that day. And what we tend to find is that price likes to touch any exposed uh, points of control. So, for example, you've got this horizontal blue line that's yet untouched up at around about 12,800. That's an interesting number. Um, you've got another one here around about 12,600, 12,580, somewhere around there. And we had another one from the 17th of July, sorry, correction, 20th of July, that got a touch yesterday and is now no longer there. But what I have noticed is that the developing POC for today is the same level. So this is quite a significant zone, especially if you want to short sell this market at the moment. Would I recommend short selling? Uh, well, I'm not going to make any recommendation at all, but... Um, would I personally short sell the market? It's really difficult to say because we're pretty bullish. We've had a strong trend. We gapped above previous resistance, which is always a sign of strength. We need a pullback, but I'm definitely not bearish. Um, and for me personally, my trading plan, I need to see a four to one reward to risk in order to train, trade counter trend. And um, it's difficult to find those setups. It's difficult to find those setups. So at the moment, we've got an interesting point of control above us. If you're bullish, uh, that's got to be the first target area, and then extended targets will be the second one. But I'm not just going to use TPO chart to, uh, to trade off. But that gives us an idea of where we are at the moment and what's directly above us, and there is space to move into uh, still above. All right, onto the daily chart, just to give a little bit more detail. We've got a moving average envelope here, eight period daily moving average, high and the low. We've got a bearish channel here, which we clearly broke out above, but I've still kept it. We have previous resistance at 340 to 350, somewhere around there, 335 to 350. We gapped above that, just, just pushed it out of the way, using a rugby analogy, just palmed it off, see you later, and uh, push it to the side as it just continued to rally 300, 200 points higher. Uh, directly into this little area here, which I've marked out as a gap from sort of mid-July. So that's interesting. Slow price down temporarily. I took a scalp short on this market earlier today, got stopped out. And there's an order that I still have open in the market, a little bit higher up, which I sent out as a signal to uh, premium guys yesterday. 
didn't get filled. But it still looks good. I like the setup. Posted about that in the journal as well. All the context behind it, screenshots, the reasons why. Um, fits the trading plan. Happy with the numbers. So execute the trade. And got a couple of other areas. So I've got the circle that I've printed up here. That's a longer term target. It's around about that 12.8 zone. And that'll be based on a number of things. One is the median line of this fork here, ABC, that you can see, ABC, um, using Alan Andrew's work. Great technical tool. Highly recommend reading about that. Um, we've also got, uh, if you consider that that gap is a balance point, then you take a Fibonacci from the bottom, put the 50% line in that gap, and it gives you a rough extension target as a measured move. And it's pretty much bang on that median line, which is great. Nice bit of confluence. So for me, there's uh, quite a bit of strength to aim towards 12,800. The trick is finding the entry, because would I buy at 524 to reach 12,800? Well, no, because you could easily retrace down to these lows. And then you sat on six, four, or 500 points of drawdown in order to get 300 points of reward. It just doesn't make sense to me. So I'll be waiting for a pullback. And that's what this box would be here. So that looks interesting to me. All right, so that's the daily chart. Um, 240 minute, let's take a look on there. Really steep fork. I joked about this yesterday in the video, but it's still valid. It's still there and uh, it hasn't broken it yet. I almost put it there as a joke, but um, you know, the trajectory of this is so steep. It almost lines up. Sort of like a um, distribution fade buying if you can find pullbacks towards this median line, um, which was actually mentioned in the channel this morning by one of our traders, or one of our uh, one of our community members, um, who's an excellent trader, John, um, sort of suggesting that there's an opportunity to, to, to still get long. But I'm a little bit more reluctant to do that just now because it's quite expensive for me. So I'm waiting for the pullback. Um, so directly above us here, uh, we've still got some resistance. We've got the reaction line here, which I think is a pink line, but I am colorblind, so you may have to correct me there. And we've got some horizontal resistance from, if we look left, uh, from previous moves. And there's kind of a bit of confluence there, and price has just reacted shy of that, so that's interesting. If we come up and test that, it could be an opportunity maybe to fade this move short. But again, unless the reward to risk is there, I'm not really going to be interested in doing that. There's a setup there for four to one, which is an entry of 560, uh, stop 610, target of, five, three, uh, of uh, 360. But I mean, that's quite rich. I mean, that's, that's expecting a lot to get there. So maybe I'd need to change those numbers a little bit. All right, so the A, B, and C I can remove. Let's tidy this chart up a little bit. Okay, next chart, 200, sorry, 2,500 tick chart. It's going to be very similar to the 240 minute, I think. Um, kind of. So we've got another fork there. Probably is going to start to become invalid now, that fork. I've been saying that for a few days now. But um, the most... Interesting bit on this chart really is the second ABC here, which is a Fibonacci extension study that I've added. And it provides us with an extension measured move of 5.75 here, roughly. Maybe slightly different on futures. This is FXCM. And uh, it's just around about that reaction line at the top as well. So that's why 5.50 to 5.75 has been an interesting zone for me to watch. All right, what's next? 500 tick chart. I'm looking at automating a strategy that covers these sort of consolidation boxes. Really, really useful. Um, you can use it in combination with other technical tools as well. So I'm getting a couple of developers involved to build something there. But we had a breakout to the downside of this particular one and then a retrace back inside now. So uh, you could say that that was a fake move. But I'm still trying to define the, the rules for this as to what kind of amount you're supposed to be looking to trade, how far, where your stop loss goes, uh, how do you define the consolidation? There's loads of uncertain questions, you know, unanswered questions as far as definitions. This is still very, very juvenile, this idea. Um, 
But a couple of short setups that I've posted on this um, are there. But I'll discard this second one because it doesn't fill the plan. I need four to one. doesn't give me it. The fork is still here uh, from the ABC. And it's a nice median line because it gets multiple touches all the way through. And we've had a, a gap below it and a gap above it. And we're still above it. And we're still respecting the top line as well. So it's it's still a decent uh, set of lines, this one. I'm ignoring this one for now. 50 tick chart. So uh, we've broken above the IB, the initial balance. Both the one hour and the two hour IB have both been broken to the upside. Tried to test it from the down uh, with a retracement back inside the deviation high. Came towards VWAP, which is just such a common thing that we see. Um, you know, when you get these retracements back inside the bands. If we break below VWAP, that makes it a little, a little more interesting. Really, not much to say here. You can ignore ADX. I put ADX on the chart just simply because I'm looking to see whether that will give me an indication of when price consolidates. So, for example, when price gets below 10 on ADX, it tells you that you're in a consolidation zone. But it's it was just an idea. Ignore it for now. And ATR is there for a similar reason in case I want a multiple to calculate a profit target. So five times ATR, 10 times ATR, whatever. It was just an idea I was playing around with on the simulator. All right. So um, really, just to summarize the DAX, I mean, we're bullish, clearly bullish, um, technically bullish because of this breakout and the strength of the breakout. We yet to see a pullback, though, which is worrying. But I want to be buying a pullback if it holds. And that's going to be my measured move targets. Shorts to the downside, you could technically fade this move if you can catch a four to one because uh, it's counter trend at the moment, in my opinion. Um, and there are a couple of opportunities if we can spot them. So that's it for the DAX, really. That's kind of how I'm looking. So um, looking to buy pullbacks, there are some fade moves and extension targets around about 12.8. All right. FTSE, I did a scalp short earlier on today, um, which was quite nice, uh, about 15 points or something like that, 16 points, which is good. Bought down here on the bounce, at about 35, I think it was, somewhere around there. Got out just before 9.30 this morning because there was some news coming out and I was in the middle of a webinar. So um, I got out. A couple of interesting moves that are out there at the moment. So we've got US oil that I've been talking about in the chart, in the room. I'm long on that at the moment. Gold is confusing me because uh, I, I want to be bullish. I want to be buyer of gold. But um, I've got this daily fork that's kind of worrying me. So I'm a little bit analysis paralysis at the moment on gold. But I want to go long. And I see a setup here that looks interesting to me based on a simple pitchfork idea. Nearly six to one. I mean, it's a no brainer for me, but I need a pullback and the pullback could then threaten a reversal. So, you know, it's, it's, there's risk. But, you know, one in 12 times, roughly. One in 15, 14 times I need to be right on that kind of setup. No, I don't. That's 14% is what I meant. <laughs> God, I get my numbers all wrong. So 14% of the time I need to be right for some move like that. And, okay, so that is that. I've been looking at a lot of Forex setups. I'm not going to share any of those in this webinar today. Uh, Dow looked interesting as well. In fact, did we not get an all-time high on the Dow yesterday? which is just ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. I think I'm starting to, the more I learn about cryptocurrencies, starting to become heavily anti-establishment and really starting to become a bit of an activist, which is worrying. I didn't think I had that in me. I know I'm in a folk band and we talk about all this stuff as, as lefties quite a lot, but I didn't, I don't know, I'm waffling, but. I'm just slightly disillusioned with the US monetary policies.
so uh, yeah, didn't trade that. I'm not going to trade that. As far as the cryptos go, um, we've taken a hit on the value of the portfolio. Haven't changed anything, but red day. Lots of retracement. I honestly do think that at some point very soon, if not right now, we are going to be in a bull mar a bear market. We're going to need to see some retracement. I mean, just, just look at these numbers. I mean, Bitcoin in a year has gone up 10 times, 10 times. Ethereum has gone up nearly 100 times. You know, you can't sustain this level of growth without a significant pullback. And I'm not accepting that it's a bubble because I don't believe that it is. But I am accepting that they're grossly overvalued and they need to retrace. But that just for me is going to allow me to spend all my money on it. And I'm going to go shopping and I'm just going to buy everything. Because I genuinely believe in this stuff, some more than others. But um, yep, yeah, all time high on the portfolio has been 540. We're currently sat at 440. And again, just to remind you, that was based on $125 originally, which was for Litecoin when I switched it over to play around with Bitfinex. Um, did a few trades, made a bit of money. And I've now got a position in Ripple and IOTA, which is a bit interesting because they've had some dodgy stuff come out against them recently, which has caused a 50% sell off uh, of vulnerability in their code, which is pretty significant but I still have belief in the team. So this could retrace way down to sort of 25, way down there. And if it does, I might even consider buying more. But, um, you know, I'm also quite happy to sit and hold this. I'm quite happy for this to go to zero. It was an experiment. Um, so, you know, we'll see what happens. The algo uh, looks interesting. I have, all right, okay, it's sold. Interesting. I'm just testing this thing on a demo account, coded a piece of software that it looks great. Um, and uh, it's got some decent money management in there. It's got a decent trading stop system. It uses a whole bunch of different technical indicators to act as a switch. And it can switch between trending, breakouts, uh, ranging, all of these sorts of things. So it's quite, uh, it's quite handy. But it's suggesting that currently in range, so um, keep an eye out for selling high, buying low. That's kind of everything I wanted to go through for today. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I've covered everything I wanted to. I guess I'll just quickly mention where the point of control is for today. We're looking at 24, 524 for the POC, at 544 for the uh, value area high and 516 for the value area low. If we do manage to catch a short setup, and we do break below the lows of today, then my target is 442, which is the POC from Monday. Looks interesting to me. Didn't quite break below the value area high of Monday yesterday, but it, we did pierce it today. So if we managed to stay under the highs of yesterday, I still like the idea of a retracement back towards the POC for Monday, 442. All right, come around tomorrow for a webinar uh, on DAX Trader. Come and join us on the Telegram channel for free, the broadcast channel. Just send me a message on Telegram. The links are in the description below, um, and we'll add you up to that, no problem. Um, John's going to be doing a webinar with us tomorrow, and he's got some great content to run through, so come and join that. It's free, and um, yeah, it'd be great to have you guys there. But good luck trading for the rest of the day, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Take care, guys.